Last week, I introduced you to the new Skid Factory. Between myself and a bunch of my close mates, we made a bunch of progress, transforming this empty space into my dream workshop. We've got the floors painted, we've got a couple of cars in, we've got some pallet racking installed, but there's still a few things missing. One of those things is hoist, and I've just taken delivery of three 4.5 tonne two post clear floor hoists. These are from Joel's garage here. I've got 140 square meters on the floor here to deal with, and I've been quite ambitious and gone and ordered three of them. They are gonna fit. It is gonna be a very tight squeeze here, but I'm trying to maximize basically the workspace area to be as productive as I can, not only with having vehicles as storage, but also having two more hoists that are, I can work on freely with room to move. So where these cars are now, that's a bit of the plan as to where two hoists are gonna go. And we're also gonna put another hoist here at the doorway. This one most likely will just be for storage only and these two are probably gonna be the, the working hoists. And the reason I've gone with Joel's garage gear is a few reasons. One, Joel is a very top bloke himself. He's local on the Sunshine Coast here. He has got distrib distribution from Melbourne and Brisbane. Two, colour scheme, blue and this dark grey. I really like it. So many hoist companies have got like bright yellow and bright red, which I didn't really want to go for. Uh, other one is cost, very affordable hoists, 240 volts. So this shed here, I don't have three phase power. I've only got 240 volts. So they are gonna work with the shed here. The other one is just the communication and business dealings with Joel's has been so good. Even the man Joel himself has been so great to deal with. So thank you so much, Joel. We are gonna be trying to install these ourselves. I say try because I've never done it myself. My mates whom are coming have only seen it done and we're gonna put our heads together and try figure it all out. It doesn't seem like too bad of a job. I've worked on plenty of cars. If I can dismantle an engine, I'm sure I can put a hoist together. So we're gonna get them uh, installed in the next few days. I've got the forklift so we can sling them up and that's gonna be the biggest advantage for us. And basically from there, uh, it's installed all the hydraulics and my brother Matthew will be wiring them. As I said, 240 volt, we're gonna run some power down from the roof so that it's just clean and easy out of the way. So that's them done. I've taken all the packaging off them. They came on a tilt tray and got delivered. So that's them there. I just wanted to unbox them. Unboxing's pretty cool, whether you get a $20 part or an expensive hoist. So three hoists, they're getting installed. Uh, the other thing, my brother Matthew has been doing heaps of work electrical wires. It doesn't seem like much. Last, last episode we left off, he'd only had the lights installed. It's been a few days now since that last episode. We've got power points, everything up in there is installed. Heaps of jobs to get done. What are you doing now? He's putting a power point over near the fridge. We've got a fridge installed and um, sweet. I'm also waiting on, expecting a delivery any minute now, coming from Super Cheap Auto, waiting on those to come. I've got a bunch of gear from Toolpro, so very exciting times. Everyone loves an unboxing. Three phase is still 240. It's just... Oh, what I said before, for the hoists. Yeah, it's just over. Oh, sorry, I should refer it to a single phase. And I should say it's 230, not 240. Is it 230? 230. Why do they label it as 240? Um, I don't know, maybe China might be 240 and it's just close enough. They round it up. Yeah. But we're, Australia was 240, now it's 230. Might be 240 somewhere in Australia still. You're not leaving that big hole there, are you? Yeah. You are? <laughs> it's just, yeah. Oh, you're going to leave that? Oh, okay, that. Sorry. <laughs> I'll leave it to your job, how about that? Yeah, <laughs> make, make me nervous watching me. Can we just stop and appreciate Kevo in all his beauty, just waiting to be worked on. This is gonna be one of the first cars I work on in the skid factory, but I have got another project which may be first and that is a supercharged LS going in something. I'm not gonna reveal the vehicle, so stay tuned for that. A while back we did ask what color we should paint this engine bay and I've kind of decided on the factory color, which was this green. I think it's like C061. I think it's a great color and I think that will make the engine bay pop with all the black and the alloy. So let me know what you think and stay tuned for some Kevo content. I'm keen as to get in this thing and get it running. Oop. Do some fast passes. I don't know if you've seen this, the shifter and stuff yet, but this got done by our mate, Matt from Oregon Industries. Got a tunnel in there. 
The seats are just temporary, but yeah, it all came out really nice. Kevo, very soon, mate, very soon. Same with this thing too, also very soon. Fresh workspace means fresh new tools. We've been working with Super Cheap Auto for the last five years, and more specifically, the Tool Pro range. We've tried and tested those tools, thrown them around the workshop, we've taken them everywhere we go, and we absolutely love them. So, kidding out the workshop only meant one thing, and that's to get a bunch of new Tool Pro stuff. I've had four pallets delivered. I've gotten eight toolboxes in total. The plan is to have a wall of toolboxes so that everything is organized in its drawers and I know where things go and where they belong. And if someone borrows a 10 mil, I'll know that it's missing. So heaps of stuff to unbox. We've got heavy duty benches, parts washer, workshop press, some stuff that I don't even know where it is. There's random boxes arriving of tools. So very keen to get it unboxed, get it positioned into the space and hopefully what I've got figured out in my head mentally comes out as a general plan and it all goes smoothly and there's nothing missing. Let's get into it. We've got two pallets unloaded and this might give you a bit of an idea of my vision. It's actually quite fun unpacking all this stuff. It's a bit like Christmas time again. So I think I might have my measurements a bit messed up. I might be 300 mil short, but this red toolbox isn't meant to be here. It's just meant to be a wall of black ones so far it should fit. I've got to wait till I get him in there first. The red toolbox is actually for like a, a floating work, workshop toolbox to move around the workshop freely. Um, there's a couple more of the black ones to get unboxed and cleaning up as we go, throwing all the cardboard in the corner that is getting recycled at our local recycling, recycling plant. It's like that meme of when, that, when you need a rag in a hurry, you rip it off someone's back. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone's probably going to comment that these toolboxes are overkill, but having worked in plenty of workshops over the years, I know that there's no shortage for storage. This is going to come in handy for not only tools, but also spare parts and a whole bunch of other crap that you just accumulate over the years. It's so good to have a place for that out of the way, stored in drawers. There's so many tools that I had delivered to along the way. So all this stuff, I've got positioning jacks from Tool Pro, engine stand, Little jack, jack stands, big jack, shop press and the parts washer. I am waiting on a sandblasting cabinet, I'm not too sure. That's definitely not it, I don't even know what's in that box, I've got to unbox it, but there's also heaps of stuff, like anything from hand tools, magnet parts tray, um, there you go, my tool pro rattle gun. This is a bonus and something that I was actually really excited about. The Eufy security cameras. I'm a big fan for security and these will get mounted up outside just to keep an eye on visitors coming past. If I'm not here, I can chime in and yell at, yell at them through the camera. There's also a bunch of other stuff. Torque wrenches, ratchet spanners, diagnostic scanners. We've got everything here, hacksaws. There's so much stuff. Um, I believe that might even, that could be the sockets actually, the socket sets. So all these hand tools and it's all gonna get fitted out in the toolboxes. I believe this is gonna be the main one for all the hand tools. So sockets, spanners, screwdrivers, pliers, all the rest of that stuff, just so it's mobile and it can be moved around the workshop depending on where I'm working. These can get kitted out with the specialty tools and maybe one for electrical, one for plumbing, one for wiring, who knows, all the rest of it. So I know that these are gonna get filled up real quick. So that's what we've got so far. Another bonus, which I know it's something very small, but I'm excited about is having spare pallets that the toolboxes came on. I can now use them on the racking. So that's a big one for me. I like recycling, I like reusing, which is good. And um, all this cardboard's gonna get stashed into the back of the crown and we'll go take that to the tip. Yeah, 
lots of jobs. It is swimming in here. It's honestly, it feels like it's 40 degrees. It's so hot. And I spoke to my brother. We are gonna put some aircon in. So aircon's gonna end up being up on these walls here. I think you're gonna get two uh, seven kilowatt systems and a five kilowatt upstairs for the mez. Reaping the rewards of the wagon once again. I don't know if this is all gonna fit in there, but I'll surely try my hardest. Hey mate, way more cardboard again. More cardboard, yeah. Hey, what's the exact weight? That just, is that just what it is there, 1.98? Yeah, cool. Awesome, thanks mate. Cheers. Within 10 kg. Big rig, two ton crown wagon. Well, today is hoist day and we've got the Matt Rogan, the Dave Rogan, we've got Uncle Pete over here. Hey mate, you're in the hive, he's ready to go. Ready, always ready. Right on. So, we have got the three hoists going up and these guys, it's a collective decision to get them positioned. I've got one stood up already. Oh, here he is, the man himself, Joel. How you going, man? How are you? Oh, good. Yeah, good, wicked. All right, so collective effort. We've got to get a hoist installed here. We've got to move Kevo out. I'm thinking about the other one here, but we'll just see how we go. Get on the forklift and move some stuff around. So we've got the safety switches installed on the top beams. This is so that if you bring the car up, it hits the switch and stops it from putting it through the roof. And now we're just getting them leveled out and then we can bolt them to the ground, tighten these up, bolt them to the ground. Maddie's got the SDS drill. And then we'll move on to tightening everything up, putting the cables on, putting the motors on, and then we'll start assembling the second one, third one. We're gonna have to move the fair lane now too. Make quite the progress and that is pretty well the first hoist installed, done and dusted. Just got the hoist arms in. These can be put, so you've got a front arm and a rear arm. They can be swapped over. We're gonna be having the front of the car predominantly facing this way. This is a hoist I'm gonna be using pretty much for all day, everyday jobs. The other two hoists were mainly gonna be longer jobs and or storage. So we've had a bit of a play with but a bit of a play with the positioning of the hoists. Originally we were gonna have one on the angle, then I said we're gonna have one this way. And then we went back to having it on the angle, but Master Dave has stepped in and said, no, that's a crap idea. So we're back to two hoists like this. So currently we are playing these hoists out here. A lot of the crew have gone home. Pete and Joel have left. So thank you, Pete, so much for coming around. And Joel, legend for lending us a hand. Joel Tulse showed us how to set them up with one of them. So now we've got it down pat. We're going to set this one up. And get the third one back over that side. So I'm going to wrap up the hoist installation there. I'm so stoked to have two hoists installed and so stoked that I've got some awesome mates who have come and give me a hand. And not only give me a hand, but lend me their tools. Like it's, I've got a Pete drop down an STS drill and the uh, big level and stuff for us. So stoked. Thank you so much, guys. You are legends. I really do appreciate it. And now I'm going to grab myself a lemon squash or maybe a ginger beer and head home to the aircon because it is, it's swimming. It's so hot. We're done and dusted. And I'll catch you once I get some more tools in and get some get set up a bit better. It's been just over a week since we had the hoist installed and today is Thursday. Last night I aired the first video of the shed and I want to say a massive thanks to everyone who's commented on the video. I think it's one of our most popular videos to date. So 
just want to say thanks to everyone commenting positively and congratulating me. All those suggestions I have taken on board, although I am a bit more fast paced and ahead, I'm still only really a week ahead now. So I've made a bit more progress. We've got these two hoists installed last time with a whole crew. And since then I had my mates Lee and Treno rock up and we hooked in and got another hoist installed in the corner. I wasn't gonna do that one. Matt Rogan was the, my, my main man who said, don't do it just yet, wait until you get in the workspace first. But because I have it, I just thought, I'll do it now, and if it pisses me off, I'll then remove it and get rid of it in the future. But so far, so good. It's actually working quite well in the corner there. I've had Kevo parked in here for a few times, right up against the, the stairs, and there still is room in behind, so it works out all well. Another sweet addition to the shed is air conditioning. Today is raining too, so it gives you a bit of an idea of sound quality so far. It still is a bit echoey. There is a heap of suggestions in the comments section too how to combat that, but already with the cars and everything else in the shed, it's getting a lot better. So I've got two eight kilowatt uh, Mitsubishi systems downstairs here for the shed, and I've got one five kilowatt upstairs for the Mez. That one's already hooked up. We're still yet to finish these ones off. The office still hasn't been done. We've been waiting on some VJ. Also, my mate Jake has been doing me a favor and we're doing it in his time. So I'm happy to be patient. Jake is a legend, thank you so much. We've got a scissor lift coming tomorrow to get all this done. So we'll stay tuned for that. And pretty well, the shed has kind of just been slowly getting transformed into what it is now. We had more stuff arrive from Joel's garage gear, which is a time machine. This is an addition because I know I'm always gonna use one and I've always used friends ones. I just wanted one for myself. Very awesome machine to have and I know I'm also gonna make a lot of friends with this, so if you need your tires changed, give me a call. I've also got, ooh, got a nice Cody. I've also got a oil container for oil drainage and stuff. This one actually has got suction attachments on it too, so I'm stoked on that and I can suck oil out. There's dipstick holes and stuff like that. Um, this is the layout I'm going for so far. I've got to run compressed air over to this side. So I've got the sandblaster and the time machine, which is, which is pneumatic. Parts washer, bit of a detailing kit. All my bars bug stuff can come on here. This is gonna be a bit of a dirty corner. Again, thanks to the comment section, everyone suggesting stuff. This wasn't gonna go over here. This was gonna be workbenches too, but now I'm decided that this is gonna be the dirty area. So I've got the Arcdroid. Gonna have some welders from Unimig coming soon. So they're gonna be in the corner here too. And I'm gonna get a, a mobile workbench in the corner. And I thought, you know, fabrication bench, um, although this has still got tools in it um, and I slowly am filling everything out all these drawers I'm slowly kitting out with stuff so we've got thread repair pullers got some special tools hiding away so there's just nothing in that one yet yeah everything's coming together and making some progress so keep on keeping on and um, get some more jobs done fix your starter motor brother sweet what was that meme you sent it was like drives a $500 car to his to earn money, I don't know what it was. Anyway, Matt's that guy, drives a shit box. No, good old Gen 2, the starter motor's playing up, so we're gonna pull that out today. Someone didn't charge a jump pack, so we're resulted to a bit of a couple of zip ties and some old jumper leads. The weird thing is, the starter motor seems to be I mean, yeah, it's noisy, but it's not, it's still kicking out. Maybe when there's load on it, it must not be. Just throw them back in. Anyway, enough of getting sidetracked. We'll get back to building the shed. All right, all right. We're still a bit sidetracked, but we ended up pulling the starter motor apart and yeah, it's cooked. So we just replaced it with a, another banger and gonna throw it in. When are you gonna put a snorkel on this bad boy and go to the Cape? Oh, come on. Never. Another YouTuber did it with seven people. <laughs> the meme was, the guy that drives a $500 shipbox but owns it outright compared to a guy that drives a $50,000 car on finance. Who's doing better financially? Yeah, that's right. Anyway, uh, just had a delivery rock up too, so I'm pretty stoked. Um, Cameron from Unimig dropped by and dropped me off a bunch of gear. This is all available now from Super Cheap Auto. Super Cheap Auto are now a distributor for Unimig. So whether if you need consumable items or you need to get yourself a machine, what I've gone for is I've got a uh, plasma cutter, so Viper Cut 30, 
the Viper Multi 185 and the 180. So I've got TIG, MIG and Plasma Cutter. These are all 10 amp machines so they can be used at home. Only 10 amp plug. You can get 15 amp machines, but for what I'm doing, I'm not a crazy hardcore guy that's building trays or welding chassis. I'm just doing the basic fabrication stuff. So all this is going to be fine for what I'm doing. And we're going to hopefully finish off the aircon install after we get this um, starter motor done. Also, shout out to the crew that have reached out and wanting to help out. This is being released close to when the episode's out, but we've, we've got this sorted. The guy reached out for the aircon. Thanks, homie. I really do appreciate it, but we're getting it sorted. And I've got a couple of blokes coming to do the um, roof, to line the roof inside there. So absolute legends. Really stoked. So getting it done. And then once we're all finished off, we can start moving on to some projects. Other vehicles, eh? Get stuck into it. we got Jake McConnor built back, 0458 266 Can you number again? 588. Today we are doing the VJ board up the top here, so we've got a scissor lift hired. I've used this car trailer to pick up more stuff than I have cars recently. It's come in very handy, and um, this is what we need to get set up the top there. So that's what's going on. It is a bit tricky with the scissor lift. Someone put a hoist in the way there now, but oh well, we're getting it done. And um, yeah, that's it. On today's episode of the Jake Factory, we've just got um, got Woody, um, the builder, who's just here to um, do a bit of construction work. <laughs> so if that's level, everything else is level. You should work off this one sheet. Yeah, you sort of want to have a good start. If you have a good start, you have a good finish. Oh, yep. So I, need, like... I need you to bring that top across. How far? Level. Hey? Yeah. All right. So what, 400 you reckon? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I want one of these for Christmas. A tool pro one, but eh? Yeah, but a tool pro one. Well, it's currently 7.47. A couple of notifications there. Jake has done an awesome job. Very stoked with how it's looking. He bailed out about, I think it was about 6 or 5.30. Got the whole outside of the mez sheeted and we've just started painting. Stoked with how it's looking. I'm still yet to fit the glass in, but they can get done at a later date. This is, uh, we've got the 24 hour hire on the scissor lift, so we need to get it done. And I've done up to about here. Painting VJ is a pain in the butt. I'm using a brush. The brush I'm using, I wish I bought new ones. I'm using this old thing. It's like using a bit of bloody cardboard. It's so stiff. Sebi is gonna be so, it's rock hard and I'm just making an absolute mess, but I'm still getting the job done. So that's what's going on. My brother hooked up the five kilowatt aircon upstairs and also the one of the eight kilowatts downstairs. So it's, it's actually kind of working and cooling this place down a little bit, which is good. So now I've just done up here and I'm gonna wait for it to dry a bit, do one more coat on it. I'm gonna move the scissor lift and get done over this side. I got the keys to this place a little over a month ago and I've got to give a massive thanks to all of my friends and family who have helped me out along the way. Without your help, I'd still be sweeping the floors. I've also got to give a massive thanks to all of the awesome companies who support the Skid Factory and also a massive thanks to you guys for watching, those who support us via Patreon or who buy our merch. Also, fresh Z shirt out in stock at the moment. Without you guys' support, the show would not continue on. So now we're at the stage where the shed can be worked in. I've got some awesome projects lined up in 2024, and this is what's gonna happen. Basically, whatever's happening in the shed at any given week, whether it be the Pajero, Kevo, the Fairlane, or maybe a KE70 Corolla, whatever I'm working on, I will be making videos on. I've got a bunch of awesome mates with some awesome cars, and I've also got a bunch of mates that are building their cars in their own workshops, which I'm just gonna simply go hang out and film that stuff. 
There's also some event coverage which I'm getting to and basically just general car shenanigans. Anything automotive I'm going to be filming. I can get one video done a week. I will always commit to that. But there may also be two or three videos a week. So if you're not subscribed, please make sure you hit that button to keep up to date with all our videos. This is what this space has been built for. Not only myself, but me and my mates to work on some awesome cars. So I'm really excited for a massive 2024. The office space upstairs has been all sheeted in and we've got the glass installed now. So it's looking good for on this side. The inside still needs to get sheeted and I still need to move all my computer gear up into that space. That space is gonna be a bit of a hangout spot. Also a place to pack the merch orders and also a place for me to edit all the videos. We've got aircon installed into the shed. Thank you so much to my brother, Matthew. We've got two eight kilowatt systems down here and a five kilowatt system upstairs. We've only got one hooked up at the moment and it actually cools down the shed quite a lot. So I'm very keen for some cool air in the shed to be motivated to work on some projects. It also motivates my friends to come around and hang out in the aircon too. So massive 2024 plan. We've got cars to work on. We've got bikes to work on. I might even be buying a boat. I don't even know yet. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching the Skid Factory. I'll see you next week. Bye, have a great time. My brother wanted it known that I was the one that ran the conduit so that no one can rag on his work like I cut this too short and we had to put a joiner in. Matthew is very pedantic with his work and didn't want to have his name put on my work. Anyway, the truth's out now, Matthew. You can rest easy. You can sleep well at nights. <laughs> now there's proof, Josh. You can't hide anywhere. <laughs> And yes, 33s do fit with a two inch lift. Oh, do they? Oh. I thought we had to confirm with Cowboy Tune about that one. Oh, true, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pick me up from the trainer.